Good morning, everyone. I got up at 4.30 this morning so I could have my coffee. Okay, espresso. Ah, that's what I have over here. Mm, oh, it's good, so good. Yeah, I had a little bit more water than just an inch that you actually get with an espresso. If it's a true espresso. <clears throat> so I could, and I wanted to do the same yesterday, and I said, oh, I'll just turn around one more time, <laughs> and it was six o'clock, and I had to run over there to the house. Yes, I have baby duty. So today I did the same thing, and I ended up, oh, dear me, I guess getting a little distracted. No, I didn't go back to sleep. Now it's 5.30, and I got to get going. <laughs> uh... I came across something interesting yesterday. I know I use all these little examples, right, <laughs> out of my own life to just, how does one deal with inconsistencies, right? So I talked to my daughter yesterday morning. I said, what are we going to have for dinner? I said, you know, we still have uh, tilapia in the freezer. And she's the one that usually cooks that. So I said, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about doing that. She said, oh, that's great. That's great, mom. And I look, and to take it out to defrosting, and it's not tilapia, it's pollock. And pollock is a very inexpensive fish, and if you cook it right, it's not fishy at all or anything. And uh, it's good fish. It's actually really, really good fish if it's cooked right. I hadn't cooked pollock uh, in a long time, and I thought, oh, how am I going to make that? But I knew what I was going to make with it. I saw... Uh, a, uh, a, someone tossed together a salad. It was, oh, it looked so fresh and, oh, and so, <laughs> so I wanted to do that. And it's basically, oh, and I, and I uh, uh, went and got, we have mustard, wild mustard greens growing in the front yard, uh, uh, in the flower beds. And no doubt, because I brought a lot of dirt with me from the farm and I put it, you know, wherever it was needed and, and to, yeah, okay. And so, I, no doubt, I have no doubt, there's, there's no mustard greens here, wild mustard greens anywhere, but they're everywhere on the farm, and sure enough, yeah, there's another growing here. And I saw it, I'm going, oh, I'm going to throw that in the salad. So it's spinach, the wild mustard greens, I had some red bell pepper, we still have cherry tomatoes, uh, I used some Jerusalem artichoke, and they're so crispy, I, I ate one yesterday, just, oh, so delicious, so juicy, and the flavor, I, I, I'm i not sure what it was here, they're a little bit sweeter here, okay, just depends sometimes, right, just like with carrots, yeah, some are sweeter, some are not, and uh, what else did I put, I had some uh, uh, green onions, I put in a few, my, my granddaughter, oldest granddaughter, does not like fresh onions, so, but she's okay with the uh, green onions, uh, they're not that strong, what else did I put in there? And then I just put some lemon juice over top, a little tiny bit of oil, and a tiny little bit of salt. And I mix that up. Oh, it tastes so fresh, so good. So, oh, oh. And I thought, that's going to go great with fish. And, yes, and I, I, I wondered a little bit about that, but I thought, well, I'm going to use it up anyway. My oldest granddaughter also doesn't like sweet potatoes. And uh, so I made her a regular sweet, uh, a regular potato. And I just cut them up and uh, and slowly uh, just uh, uh, seared them kind of until they were soft in oil on both sides. And, uh, and sweet potatoes for the rest of us. So I went on the, online, on, on, the, on the internet, on YouTube, and found me a, a Pollock recipe. Oh, it looked absolutely delicious. In the oven, I thought, oh, that's perfect, because I need the stovetop for the potatoes. And uh, it looked so good. There, there was the, uh, they made a, a paste, kind of, to put over the top, which was sour cream, Parmesan cheese, I always forget, uh, butter, uh, 
you mix that all up melted butter mix that all up i put some dill in it on top of that and then you put it in the oven and then it's supposed to nicely brown on the top okay I'm looking in there. It's about six minutes to being done. I'm looking in there. And, of course, that pollock, because it was had been frozen. I think it would have done that regardless. I can't see that. Maybe with fresh, it doesn't happen like that. Because, you know, when you freeze things, it, it, it pulls in water. Yeah? It's, just, it's just how it is. And the whole tray was full of water. I mean, like fish sauce. Yeah? And, uh, and I thought, oh, that's not going to brown that. That's... That's and I wonder is that done? Is it done now? Anyway, so I thought I thought, man, didn't even mention that on the video, right? Okay, so I'm going, ugh, what, what do I do now? I hadn't cooked pollock in a long time. What do I do now? And is that fish done? Ugh. Anyway, um, I went, I thought, I thought about it, and I thought, I'm going, huh, that's why we have broilers. <laughs> And uh, uh, when the fish was done, I took it out, I poured off the excess uh, water in the tray, and then put it under the broiler for about three minutes. That's all it took, and it looked perfect. And I kind of checked the fish to see, and I'm going, man, that looks really good. This looks just done right. My daughter got home, we sat down, everybody loved it, and the fish was just done perfect. It was, it was perfect. It was juicy and 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 uh, so again, so so the extra water kind of did come in handy because I wonder what would have happened if there wasn't any kind of uh, liquid. Uh, it was perfect. Everybody loved it. Uh, the top was done it just right and amazing meal. And it's in in it sat so pleasant in one's system in one's stomach it's almost as if you hadn't eaten and uh, felt great all evening all night it must have been an amazing balanced meal not just for my palate but for my whole system our whole system everybody loved it and uh so uh, uh but I faced this as, wait a minute, that's not what it looked like on the video. So now what now? And the top, as I said, didn't brown as, as much as I thought it should to get that crispiness, right? So I had to, uh, yes, I had to draw from the knowledge that I have of cooking. So what can I do instead of just serving it like that? I was not happy. Was not happy. And I uh, had to make a little change. But it was an easy change. It wasn't something that destroyed the dish or that, okay, now I can't save it. or right. Yes, it enhanced the dish with just, okay, put it under the broiler, pour off the excess, put it under the broiler. It came out perfect. Okay. Yes. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a recipe for life. And, well, it's worked for everybody else. Why isn't it working for me? And sometimes you have to just take the recipe for a life. And sometimes in our own lives, we have to change something to make it what? Perfect. Yes. Uh, but we're the ones who have to make that change. We're the ones who have to draw from the knowledge, from the past, from what we've learned, uh, uh, being given uh, ourselves already. And, and then enhance the recipe. Yes. And we do that to other people's lives too, right? Yes. Anyway, I thought I mentioned that. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why I have to bring this up. I better get going. All right, we are in the book of Job 36. The real meaning of Job's suffering. Sufferings. Elihu went on speaking. He said, be patient a little longer while I explain, for I have more to say on God's behalf. Okay, now, now maybe we're getting somewhere. I shall range far afield from my arguments to prove my maker just. I guarantee nothing I shall say will be untrue. You have a man of sound learning here. <laughs> okay. God does not reject anyone whose heart is pure. God does not reject anyone. Period. 
How do we know that? And they should have known that already as well. Because as I said, I think this was written after Jesus' time. Hmm? Because of the two. To the right and the left of Jesus on the cross. Yes. God does not reject anyone whose heart is pure or let the sinner live on in all his power. He doesn't accord fair judgment to the afflicted. Oh, he does accord fair judgment to the afflicted. He does uphold what the upright deserve when he raises kings to the thrones. If they grow proud of their unending rule, then he feathers them with chains. They are caught in the bonds of affliction. Does God ever do any of that? We went through the Book of Kings and the uh, and the Chronicle, uh, the the Maccabees, right? And the Chronicles. Did God ever have anything to do with them? Did they not do whatever they did to themselves? Regardless, the consequences, the punishment, or the consequences that these kings all went through, for example, or that was because God punished them. Or was it because they did that to their self, knowing full well, gosh, we're not following anything that God gave us. Hmm? Finding all kinds of excuses around all the Ten Commandments. I'm just saying, we're still doing that. Right? Here, Elihu says, what? Is it, again, how is that speaking for that his maker? <laughs> no, no, you're just making excuses. For the maker. For what he's doing to everyone. <laughs> Just come on now. And again, I like to remind people, I'm doing this for the reputation of God. Gosh, can we stop? I mean, here we go. We're still doing it. Right? To this day. Right? Laying this and that at God's feet. This and that. And just desserts. Right? We talked about just desserts. Just desserts are not right. I mean, you should not never think like that. That's wrong. Anyway, oh, let's just keep going. If I keep talking and talking, I'm not going to make it over there by six. No, no, no. Then I have to stop the video and <laughs> not do it. <coughs> <coughs> he shows them the import of their deeds, of the sins of pride they have committed. In their ears, he sounds a warning, ordering them to turn back from doing wrong. If they take notice and obey him, the rest of their days are prosperous and the years pass pleasantly. Okay, I guess. If not, they go down the canal and perish in their stupidity. The stubborn who cherish their anger and do not cry for help when he chains them die in the bloom of youth or stay very ignorant. That, not that there is some truth to that. Or live among the male prostitutes of the temple. But, ooh. But God saves the afflicted by his affliction, warning him in his misery. You too he would like to snatch from torment. While you were enjoying boundless abundance with rich food piled high on your table, you did not bring the wicked to trial and did not give fair judgment to the orphan. Okay, how I understand this? Having read the Divine Principle, all kinds of other books on all that, and being a part of True Parents Movement, Change of Lineage and all this, Witness, but witness with with a loving heart, not not a righteous even self righteous heart. Right? Yes, just as it says here, and a little earlier on. No, you gain spiritual children. Uh, uh, so if you got everything, this that, and okay, don't share it, or you're not. Why do I do what I do? Oh, because I want to brag about my life. This, that's it. No, because I want to encourage people to look what is possible. It takes so much work. Yes, it does. And yes, you will suffer physically, emotionally, spiritually even. But it's always, you always will be gaining. 
You always will be gaining in understanding, in love, your heart, in peace. That's what peace is. Yes? Within oneself. When, uh, when every chance that we get and realize, oh, this is a good moment, we start to plant that seed. Of what? Religion? No, that seed of... We don't even have to plant that. It's already there. Start, let it to bloom. Start, water it. Yes, water the seed within people. God loves you. Heavenly Parent loves you above anything. Everyone above anything, but individually loves you above anyone and anything that goes for everyone <laughs> good or bad all right well, that, that's how it is and then life changes it just does when i met true parents and the divine principle my life changed a hundred percent oh it was so bad before no it changed towards i started to understand The purpose of life is to bring God joy to people. All right. So we don't waste. Try not to waste. Right? We do wait for the right moment. We just don't run out there. And, and, and I wouldn't do that either. Wait, God. God's got people ready for us. Right? And don't miss the chance. Yes? Uh, to uh, water the plant. Not with doctrines and this and that. You know, you got yourself. <laughs> yes? All right. Beware of being led astray by abundance, of being corrupted by expensive presents. Take the powerful to law, not merely the penniless. Those whose arm is strong, not merely the weak. Do not crush people you do not know to install your relations in their place. Avoid any tendency to wrongdoing for... This is why affliction is testing you now. Okay. Um, all right, Elihu. You're, you're getting there. Him to God's omnipotence. See, God is sublime in his strength. And who can teach lessons as he does? Who has even told him which course to take? Or dared to say to him, you have done wrong. Consider rather how you may praise his work. At a theme that many have sung. This is something that everyone can see, gazing as we do from afar. Yes, the greatness of God exceeds our knowledge. The number of his years is past counting. It is he who makes the raindrop small and pulverizes the rain into mist, and the clouds then pour this out, sending it streaming down on the human race. By these means he sustains the peoples, gives them the plenty to eat, and who can fathom? Fathom. How he spreads the clouds, or why such crashes thunder from his tent. He spreads a mist before him and covers the tops of the mountains. He gathers up the lightning in his hands, assigning it the mark where to strike. His crashing gives warning of its coming. Anger flashes out against iniquity. That's the end of 36. Okay. Again, I have to remember also... At what time this was written. And, uh, well, science. Okay, all right, all right. People use often, you know, I just used an example of inconsistency and then on how you, uh, in something you're being taught. And then you go, but it's not working. <laughs> and I have to adjust. We have to adjust some things um, to our own circumstances. Yes? All right. Uh, I'd, I'd have a lot to say and, and I, I think I don't need to because again uh, um, one's own heart to my reading this yes, I, I do feel that Ellie who very much wants to just tell Job don't blame God make still the best out of it you make the best out of it when you were doing all well, everything was great. Now you're not doing well. Just still make the best out of it, even though. Right? Yes? All right. 
I do like to mention one more thing. Oh, I'm doing good. I lost a good friend, a sister in faith, Kathy. Her name was Kathy. And uh, I didn't even know she was sick. I had no idea. And I found out the day before yesterday that she passed away. Uh, immediately I thought, well, I guess now we can have some really interesting conversations. You in spirit world, and I'm here. And you know what? I guarantee you, I will consult her. She was an amazing sister. Uh, and uh, we both lived in uh, California. We were in both to the same church there. <coughs> of course, True Parents Church. And uh, <laughs> I remember I learned something from, okay, she taught me a lesson. A lesson in, that kind of goes around with that, doesn't it? Um, in uh, when you become too exuberant, too exuberant about rules. Rules that, do they make sense? Okay. And uh, I taught Sunday school, and I had two of her children, 7th and 8th grade, in my Sunday school class. And I had been made aware of on how it was important to... Uh, come to the Lord's house dressed appropriately, this and that, make it a little different. Than, uh, and uh, and when I heard that, okay, no doubt that uh, her preacher, preacher was there, it wasn't meant, I, not, when I think about, sometimes we hear things, when someone says something, and yeah, that, that has to be applied in the physical per rather than used as a teaching where, uh-huh, oh, okay. And I took it a little too far. I did. Absolutely guilty of that. And I told the children, I said, hey, I, listen, let's let's try to do that. I wasn't like, oh, hey, you're not dressed for pros. So let's do that. Let's, I'm going to bring, I had access to all kinds of things. I could bring some dress shirts and, and all, you know, for the boys and the girls. And, the, uh, and, uh, if the parents couldn't afford it. And we had some very poor families in our church. You know why? Because they gave so much. Financially, we gave. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I have to be honest myself. I know that Kathy and her family they gave, gave, gave very much when it came to that. And my uh, sister and Faith stayed at home, took care of the four children while Dad went to work, okay? Well, kind of like I did. I always kind of worked under the table, though. Okay, I didn't just work under the table. <laughs> you know, babysitting, stuff like that. It's not like I evaded taxes or something. <clears throat> um, and... Uh, so they lived very simply. Yes, they did. Mm, and, uh, okay, I, I, we lived very simple too. We really did. We lived very simply. We didn't have a whole lot either. But I gave as much as I felt we could afford to give. Okay? That, uh, you know, we were all still, okay. So we could afford Sunday clothes, for example. And I told the class, and so those boys went to mom and probably said, well, guess what, Daniela? Aunt Daniela said, we called each other. They called us aunt and uncle on our church. And she came to me. <laughs> she was standing there like this. She had a way of standing sometimes. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, <laughs> my children have one pair of shoes. And that's what they're going to wear to church. 
and I don't think, okay, I don't know, and I'm listening to her, and I could tell, she had this way of, very calm way, she, she was always like that, you, even when she raised her voice, she didn't really raise her voice, there's an odd way on how she was able to do that, and very methodically, always gave what she had to give, and it is very interesting how she, yeah, but what she gave was coherent, very coherent. And I looked at her and I'm going, oh my God, I got to eat some humble pie. She is so right. Why did I even do that? It went against my better judgment. I knew it. In a way, I knew that. But I had to have a sister. After I already opened my mouth, I had to have a sister come and say, hey. <laughs> And I apologized to the class the next time. I said, scratch that. I said, I am sorry. That was wrong. I, nope. We're not. Don't even. Taught me a lesson. That. Don't become too exuberant. When you know. Oh, this is it. This is the right thing for mankind. But don't get into things that then could hurt others. That makes children suddenly feel, what, inadequate? Oh, what, in the way that they're dressed? As if they wouldn't be welcomed or appreciated just as much in their simple but clean clothes as other children who show up, what, in $200 dresses or... Or a, a suit that the parents can afford? I'm just saying. Right? Yes. Okay. God is not like that. Oh, what did I say here in 36? God's not like that. God loves you. God, well, God loves you. Loves everyone regardless. Above and beyond anything and anyone else. Not something. Think about that. Every person, our heavenly parent, has that kind of love within. Hmm? And we need to learn how to be that way. <laughs> Isn't that something? Hmm. Anyway, so Kathy, I think that Kathy's still slumbering in... Uh, Unless, <laughs> I tell you guys about that. <laughs> oh. Well, anyway, I have a feeling that my sister and Faith, uh, I don't like to talk about people who've passed away in the past tense. Past tense, I uh, still talk about them alive that they're or, or in the always in the presence it's not they have not not have been they are do you know what I mean yeah so anyway we haven't seen each other in a long time the one time that I went to California she was the only one. Not, I went to church. She was the only one who says, hey, let's get together and have some coffee. And we did. Four hours we talked. Yes. Um, she had something else. She told me something that I think I should share. And if I remember, I will share it in the next video because I got to go to the house now. Ooh, well, so nice talking to you all this morning. My prayers, of course, go out to the family. My prayers and strength to the family who lost mom, wife, sister. She was an amazing person. Yes. Mm. She is. <laughs> I just caught myself. She is an amazing, she was an amazing person on earth and is 
an amazing, going to be an amazing spirit in spirit world. There. <laughs> Try to prove me wrong. <laughs> I think Kathy. <laughs> All righty. May heavenly parents bless and protect you and embrace you with love. 